Welcome to the morning service and uh, we hope you uh, will enjoy this and we're going to bring up the topic. The topic of course is wisdom revealed and uh, we're going to see then how that was, uh, comes out in the passage. Thank you very much. God bless. So we want to welcome you now to the particular uh, message time. Uh, uh, and uh, we are thinking of this uh, chapter 23 and leading into it. Uh, we've had the reading of Matthew 23, 1 to 12, and also uh, a reading in Mark 11, 15 to 18. And we appreciate that. And of course, as we go into chapter 24, then we'll find out that Jesus left this area. That's this area of the temple. So all that's happening in these times is round about the temple at Jerusalem and so it's quite interesting to see uh, you know what is happening so today we're going to think of wisdom revealed and we're going to think of at the end then about wisdom and who is wisdom or what is wisdom uh, and just a little bit so we're looking at first of all 1 to 12 it's a kind of an introduction into this particular passage and he starts with the commendation and you know he hasn't really commended the, the Pharisees and the scribes and the religious leaders of Jerusalem and Israel at that time uh, then either. He did commend the bodies. We have read also about them driving out uh, the money changers and the mess they had in the temple area, the court of the Gentiles. And so he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer of all nations, but you have met it a den of thieves. And I wonder how far our churches have fallen, you know, from what they should be in the world today. And what kind of a witness we are. And what would Jesus say now if he came amongst us? He does say whether two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst. Do you know the presence of Jesus with you, you see, as we meet together uh, uh, this morning? And that is the great thing, you see. So the amazing thing is, leading up into this passage of all that he's going to say, he starts with a commendation, and I suppose that's good. There's always something good to say to some people, isn't it? They always start with some, some nice, ni nice bit. So he starts with a commendation. And he, this commendation is because they do, you know, there is some uh, purpose in it. Here is a, a special message for the people, especially the disciples. And it's a special message for us Irish people as well, because it's just as important to us here in Ireland as it is, uh, you know. And on this particular Sunday, this called what? Women's Day, you know, as well, for the women and the great role women have in the world today, you know. Without mothers and wives and all that, uh, nothing would continue, would they, right? So there it is. Here is a special message then for us in this particular thing. How are we going to get something out of all this that he's saying, that Jesus is saying to the people? So in Matthew 23 verse 2, say, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. That's interesting. And what, is Moses, what does he mean by Moses' seat? Well, he means, you see, when Moses, he didn't sit, you know, Moses never sat, really, as a son. It's a, it's a figure of speech. But it, it's really thinking about what Moses taught. The teaching of Moses. And the scribes and Pharisees were the ones who were to do that. Now, the scribes were very liberal in what they taught. But the Pharisees were the, were they, were they uh, <coughs> legalistic and they were they conservative. And there would be the evangelical of the day, should be, you know. But I'm afraid they fell far short of it, you know. And so uh, here it is. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe. Now this is Jesus, the head of the church, who's speaking. The one who is now preparing and he's getting these pioneer workers to organize his church and to pour out the Holy Spirit upon them and to empower them with this great work. 
Therefore, whatever they tell you to do, to observe, then observe and do. Yeah, that's, that's important. That, they are to observe that. They are to do that. But then he says, but do not do according to the works. For they say, and do not do. There we are now. Here I am, and I'm in a, in a position. And do I practice what I preach? Do I say? Do I live according to the gospel? I'm sure I fail in many ways. But uh, we, we have a great saviour. And he's the one who helps us through those things if we're truly come to him in repentance and trust and ask him to live better for him. But that wasn't the case with these Pharisees and scribes. They, they taught well. They had great words because it was God's word. But they didn't follow it. Well, they did some things, didn't they? They were good teachers of Moses' teaching. That's what Jesus says. And uh, sometimes we wonder about it, uh, you know, but, but th that is, that's what he's saying. And so it's a great, what would you call it? Amazing commendation. That was a high commendation for them. I would have thought maybe too much, but no. He, he, he sees they are teaching well. But then they are not following what they teach, are they? That's the other start, you know, we have to look at that. Huh? So, to believers, what does God say? What did Jesus say? He says that those who follow him, for those who have repented and put their faith in Christ, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. Amazing, isn't it? So wonderful. And that's what he's coming to. Isn't that? But then, sadly, he comes with this other word, condemnation. And there's a lot of that about it in this chapter. They don't practice, you see, what they preach. And that's a challenge for us preachers, isn't it? And that's a challenge for us uh, Christians and, and, and for us to practice, that the world sees. And the Jews, well, they were to be witness, they were to be good example in the world. And though they, they didn't evangelize, they tell us in the Old Testament, there was foreign people who said, oh, I want their God, I want to follow their God. I see Rahab said what they did. And what happened? God did through the Red Sea. And I want to follow them. In Matthew 23, verse 4, for they blind, sorry, for they bind heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. I hope I don't do that now. You don't. But uh, they, they laid these heavy burdens and made it difficult for the people, you know, and that was quite terrible. <clears throat> you know, there was one man, uh, a, a minister, and he used to preach the law. And he preached the condemnation of the law. <laughs> and the people trembled in their seats. But one day, he started to preach the love of God. He had been converted. Trusted in Jesus. And he began to preach. And he still preached the law of God, but he preached the love of God. Jesus came. He loved us. And God so loved the world, you see. Before that, he didn't do that. But there was a big change in his heart and life. And that was amazing. And these people were laying these burdens upon the people. But they wouldn't do a thing themselves. Not lift a finger, they say. They were, what? They were domineering. They were legalistic. And imposed high penalties on people. Made it very difficult for them. And so when Jesus came with his messages... Oh, they so longed after him and loved, uh, and they looked up to him so much, uh, and uh, the people heard him gladly. Now, they didn't hear gladly these, um, you know, uh, Pharisees and scribes. Mm -hmm. So, we think about uh, in our uh, islands, England, uh, they are passed in the 16th century, the Church of England. 
imposed fines on people, forcing them to attend services and uh, to only use their prayer book. You notice in the Irish towns, you will see the Church of Ireland is central in the town. They get the central position because they, they did persecute all others, Catholics and Presbyterians and different Christian groups. And in the 16th century, the Church of England imposed fines on people, forcing them to attend service and to only use the prayer book. You could only, you could only, there's no way you could otherwise, oh, you know, use the prayer book. John Bunyan was in prison for 12 years in Bedford Jail in England. There on the, um, uh, 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 in the jail. And, uh, you know, extemporary praying or reciting the Lord's Prayer was was penalised. You know, if you, if you recited the Lord's Prayer, if you did extemporary praying like what we do, uh, not praying according to a written, written, written down, or reciting the Lord's Prayer, they would be penalised. You know, I heard, and we've seen the film of her father, he was taken and imprisoned. And the wife, the wives and families were forced to renounce the evangelical faith, the Christian faith. You know, that was what they were doing in the 16th century. That is what we've come out of, and, and they, we've had this, we've had the wars in Ireland, and we've had Presbyterians and Catholics going together against the, uh, the Anglican Church, the Church of Ireland. And then there is the situation we're in, you see, all these different problems in the past. So you see the problem you have. I hope that doesn't turn you off being a, an Irish citizen. <laughs> uh, we next then look at we looked at the uh, the commendation we looked at the uh, you know the uh, the were then uh, condemnation and now we're going to think of the charge this the biggest part maybe be that well you see we have this Jew and what he's got what has he got in his forehead. He's got what we call a phylactery. You know what a phylactery is? A phylactery is this big box, and, and if you want to show yourself a holy man, you know, you put on a bigger box. You make it bigger, you know, that the people will see it. Uh, and you make sure you let the people see, you see, I'm a, you look at this, look at this, he's got, he, he. And he would have the word of God in that. You know, something like, love the Lord, the God with all your heart, would be in that box. <laughs> and we're to think about it. They also had on their doors, you see, a, a little tube you thing, you see. And in that, they would have that words too, you see. Uh, and that would be reminding them to go out and to live for God in their society. Oh, it was important, you know, but they, 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 it, it went a matter of form. So there he is, you see. And they put on a show, verse 5. Right? And then they enlarged the borders of their garments more than recommended. They were to do that. People were to have, you know, even the men, you see, with the Lord, were to have a special thing at the bottom of their garments. And they were to have these, wear these things, you see, and do these things. And, but you see, the Pharisees had to go one step more, make it better. Uh, the one above the rest, you know, and, and they had to show how holy they were, you know, and people looking down on them, oh, Rabbi, Rabbi, how wonderful you are. Uh, you know, why were they really, why was Israel to do that? Well, you see, it was to, to set them out as different, as I said. Mm -hmm. They were to be a witness amongst the people, but they weren't to do things for a show. <laughs> a, big, a big show, you know. They weren't to do it for that. But that's what they were doing, you see. And, and that's what took over. And Jesus does not like that. No, he's not. You know. So we have to watch that, don't we? Why do it? Why did they do it then? 
Well, they did it to get human praise. The praise yeah, of the people. That's what they gloried in. And, and uh, that is terrible. Why did Jesus at another time mention taking the lower seats? He says, you know, to the disciples, oh, if you go to a party and you take the lower seats, then the host may take you up to the higher seat. And, and there, you see, it's showing about humbling ourselves before God, and God can exalt us, you see. But they wouldn't do that. They'd go to the high seats. The same as that the, uh, <coughs> as Sam told the story about that, the Pharisee, the Pharisee and the publican, and how he stood up in the front and the publican was real at the back, you know, the tax collector. He tapped at the back and he couldn't look up. He smote his breast and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And you know, the Pharisee had blowed and puffed. But Jesus says, that tax collector went down to his house justified rather than the other. So amazing, isn't it? So they love the greetings in the marketplace, are certain. People greeting, the Rabbi, Rabbi, Ma, what a wonderful man you are! Now that sort of thing, you know. Who are the you then in verse 8? Let's, let's think about who are the you in verse 8. <clears throat> For but you do not be called a rabbi, but you do not be called rabbi. Ah, the you. He says, you disciples. You don't use that title. And so now he's going to tell us what kind of a title we're going to use in the church. Uh, and these young Christians in the early church, because they were the pioneers, weren't they? They were setting the ground, you know, uh, and there it was. So he wasn't talking about who's going to be the first pope. He was going to talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, what you're going to be, you know, who are the you? So we see the you is those disciples there, uh, and us, of course, who are listening, aren't they? What should we call leaders in the church then? That is it, you see. That's really what he's coming to. Our leaders, of course, he points to our servants in the church. Yeah. We are servants. We are, we are sharing out the word of God. And there's no high and mighty title or name, you know. In Matthew 23, verse 9, Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. That's quite a challenge, isn't it? You know, what does he mean by that? Yeah, we can call a father, a human father, you see, or a daddy, that sort of title. Daddy might be better than, than, than father. But why? It's, it's confusing, maybe. But it's not. Because, you see, he's speaking spirit. He's speaking of the church. He's speaking of the new Society, the new called out people. You don't call the leader of the people father, the church leader. You don't call him father, yes. you see. <laughs> but some have done that, you see. <laughs> right. Well, what's happened there? Come on. Not a title to use in the church. Right. God is our spiritual father, you see. Our father who art in heaven, Jesus taught us to pray, you know, yeah. as the pattern prayer. And we have to be careful with, we don't like to be repeating it because it can, could get into just a repetition. God is our spiritual father, so that is it. He's the father in the faith. In Titus 1.5, for this reason I left you in Crete. This is what the Apostle Paul said to Titus. This is what he was doing in the work of the gospel in the early church. For this reason I left you in Crete, the island of Crete, that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. He had commanded him, he had told him, he had spoken out to him and now he's just basically writing it to remind them what I commanded you. And that's what he was, they were called elders. And elders was a title, of course, in uh, Israel. 
there was elders uh, in the, the groups in the, in the groups in uh, Israel as they were going through the wilderness. The, Moses had elders, the elders of the of the families. So the elders were leaders of the towns then in Israel later. Right. So leaders are God's gift to the local church. You know. They're not something to lord over it. We are to be God's gift to the church. Not to dominate it. Not to be heavy shepherding or anything like that. We must remember Christ is the head and teacher of the church. He's the teacher. Not us. Not me. You know. I'm only sharing out a word. You know, as what someone said, it's one beggar telling another beggar where to get bread. <laughs> Quite a statement, but there it is. That's what we're doing. What is the meaning of the greatest among you, verse 11? What's the meaning of that? Yeah, uh, you know, talks about, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Sorry, no, but, but he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. We really mean slave, you know. You know, we don't like to be called slaves. But that's no, what no, we are. No. Successful business person, you know, you, you, had, you have had successful business person, you think he should get top? Like Lydia was a seller of purple, you know. Well, the church, maybe the church met in her house there, you know. We don't know. But anyway, uh, that wasn't what would be important choosing a successful business person. What is to, who is to be chosen to be uh, sharing the word? It's understanding. It's the one who understands and the handling the word. Handling the word of God and sharing it out. Some ability to explain it and to share it out. We need some of that and uh, I know I stumble a lot at it. But uh, uh, it's what God says, trying to hear what he's saying through it all. Maybe I make it a bit confusing. So, the warning. It's the warning here then in verse 12 about self-exaltation. Isn't it? Verse 12. And whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. And that's, you know, he's speaking of those, uh, <coughs> to those Israelites. He's reminding them of these Pharisees and scribes. <coughs> and he's telling them, you know, he told them already, you see, because remember already, if you read your daily bread, you'll find there that he's talking about Mark wrote sandwich, sandwiches in God's word in sandwiches. One time he writes about the fig tree, the next time he writes about Jesus cleansing the temple, and then he goes back and he says, what? The fig tree, the fig tree is with it. Boy, that was a shock. That was a shock to the, to the religious hierarchy, wasn't it? Israel was going to wither. They were going to lose their nation because of the rejection of the Messiah. And all that, you know. And so that's why I say that'll give you a lot more, a wee bit more there about the background of the whole situation in Mark's Gospel too, that I didn't really take time to deal on. Finally, we started with wisdom revealed. Wisdom. Wisdom is the name for Jesus. He is wisdom. And he's revealing wisdom here. There he's beginning the introduction to it. What is this wisdom? Just knowledge or a person? It's more than knowledge. Is it a person? All about a person? In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30, <clears throat> but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who becomes for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption so Jesus Christ is wisdom and wisdom is personified in uh, what is it uh, uh, proverb no proverbs uh, 12 I think uh, if I can remember proverbs 12 uh, is it? Uh, and he's wisdom uh, sir, uh, 
Oh dear, 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 that's terrible. <coughs> I'm reminded here of Proverbs 8. All right. So there we are, we're about the end. And we hope the main thing is that we put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Saviour and Lord. Uh, wisdom revealed. And we thank you for listening. We pray that God will bless you. Let's pray. Uh, Sam, would you pray in closing, please? Thank you, Lord, for your words. We pray that you be with us uh, when in our own time we can be thinking about the things that we just learned here. And we pray for your church. Uh, help your, your followers to, to know how to give their time to you and, uh, and uh, uh, just thinking about your words. We pray that you be with us and uh, uh, with your church in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you.